And in Exodus 14 it says, As Pharaoh drew near, the sons of Israel looked, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they became very frightened. So the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt, saying, Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. They're at the Red Sea, an impassable, impossible body of water. Right? Who built the Red Sea? God. God. He called it into existence. And this is where he led them, to a place where there was no human way to deal with it. So they're doing this, and now they hear the army of the Pharaoh coming down on top of them, right? And they panic, and they mumble, they groan, they complain. Think about these words of Jesus when he told the parable, parable of the sower and the seed in Matthew 13. He said, the one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself but is only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. They cried out to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Not in faith, not trusting him. No. They cried out in fear. So then Moses says, Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. Mm -hmm. Exodus 14, 13. Now that's followed quickly by, The sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea, and the waters were like a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. When Israel saw the great power which the Lord had used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. When they got to the other side, it says in Exodus 15, Then Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song to the Lord and said, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will extol him. Sounds good, right? Yeah. They sang and they danced and they had a jubilee. They were grumbling and complaining on the other side yes. where the problem was. Yes. They weren't praising him on, on that side. They weren't singing a new they song. They weren't giving then. thanks. They weren't singing a new song then. That's when they should That's have. That's why been. Moses, because they had no faith. faith. Although they had heard the word of God and seen his mighty hand. Right? So Moses says, stand by and see the salvation. So they had to no, see it no faith. before they would believe. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that the church of God, the people of God, those who walk by faith need to rejoice, celebrate, sing songs of praise in the, on the other side of the Red Sea, in the midst of the peril. I want to give you God's commentary, okay? Listen to God's commentary on that event. Our fathers in Egypt did not understand your wonders. They did not remember your abundant kindness, but rebelled by the sea, at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for the sake of his name, that he might make his power known. Thus he rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up, and he led them through the deeps, as through the wilderness. So he saved them from the hand of the one who hated them, and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The water covered their adversaries. Not one of them was left. Then they believed his words. They sang his praise. They quickly forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel, but craved intensely in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. Yes. Yeah, they sang, they danced, they had a jubilee, they praised the Lord, but they were quick to forget it. But the word of God, God's commentary is, he said that they rebelled at the Red Sea. Mm. That's what the mumbling and grumbling and complaining is. It's rebellion against God. They, God's people, delivered from, God, from bondage by God's mighty hand, saved from death, by the blood of the lamb on the lintel of the doorpost, stirred to action by the word of God through Moses, rebelled at the Red Sea. Their grumbling and complaining, their mumbling and murmuring, was a confession of their lack of faith. 
It was rebellion. It was witchcraft. It was idolatry. It's amazing that people could celebrate the Red Sea. But I don't see them falling on their faces and repenting of their rebellion on the other Not side. At all. No. And because they did, you want to know something? We all we continue. all fall short of the glory of God. I mean, we yes. all miss the mark. Yes. Not you, Mark. That we, I mean, we all sin, right? There's That's no right. doubt about that. Absolutely, yes. But if if we sin and confess that sin, He is faithful. If we're faithful to confess that sin, He's He is faithful and just to forgive it. The church today has a lot of beliefs that do not originate from God's mouth. Mm. A lot of people say they have faith, when what they have is a belief. Okay. And oftentimes that belief comes from what they've seen, what they've experienced. Faith, true faith, only comes from hearing the voice of God. If you didn't hear God say it, you have no right to believe it. If you did hear God say it, you had better believe it. Mm.